Hello my friends, the purpose of this video is to discuss the top baseball card releases of the year. I took the top 17 releases in my mind and I put them into a spreadsheet. I assigned values to a bunch of different categories, a bunch of different variables, and I created a formula to try to figure out, try to hammer out all the details and figure out what exactly are the top 10 releases of the year. And the purpose of this is to share with the community and get feedback and see what you guys think. I also did a poll to, to get as many people's opinion as possible to add that information into a variable. And I, I get the question all the time. If I had to buy one box or something along the lines of what is my favorite release? What is the best release of the year to buy? If I only have $100 to spend or probably this year it would be more like $200 you're talking about a hobby box but people ask me all the time what the best release of the year is so here it is check it out guys okay let's start at number 17 tops flashback so you'll see in row one all the different categories that I used and I assigned values to all these different categories of a one to five rating. So let's start with the stock, the card stock. Tops flashback, I gave that a four. It's nice thick stock. It didn't get a five because some releases have a little bit thicker of a stock. I mean, it's almost there. I guess technically it could have gotten a 4.5, but I gave it a, I gave it a four. I appeal. 4.5, a lot of people like this release. A lot of people have a good nostalgic connection to the release. Collectability, got a four. I don't know how accurate that is. Some of this stuff is subjective, guys. And I'll probably say that a few times throughout the release, but some of the stuff's subjective. I gave it a four. It does sell fairly well. Licensing, if it has the tops licensing, the MLB licensing, it gets a, a bonus point. Checklist, I gave it a five. Basically, everything got a five that had all the big rookies available in it. Box price, 425 bucks. I used the, the current up-to-date pricing on this stuff as of, what, um, December 17th, I think, somewhere around there. These prices fluctuate and change, but I, I got all the prices on the same day. And these are our secondary market prices, or most of the time I used blowout prices for this. If I couldn't find it on blowout, I went to eBay and found the lowest price. The ceiling score is what is the top dollar price of a sold item for this? So let's say for example, you can scroll through eBay and look at what's the most expensive 2020 baseball card selling for or sold for. A lot of times it'll be a super fractor or something of those sorts, uh, a red parallel or a nice high-end autograph. The ceiling on this stuff is pretty high. I give it a 4.5. Now the C slash box is ceiling per box price score. So what I did was I divided the price of the box by the ceiling score. This isn't super scientific. It was just, um, it was just a way for me to add another category and I, then I, I, put, I took these numbers right here and assigned a ceiling per box score grade so that I could keep all these numbers in line on a one to five scale. So it got a three on the ceiling per box score, which basically means that it's very expensive. And in relation to the, to the ceiling, it's a three out of five. Let's go over to the dollar per auto. Okay, now there are no, guaranteed autos per box so it got a one out of five so the dollar per hit same thing not available it got a one the dollar per card four dollars and 72 cents that's quite high the dollar per card grade got a three and there's a bias grade that i added in here it's my personal bias on how much i like the product that got a three out of five the production grade Okay, this is how much of the stuff did they produce? And this was a limited quantity production, so it got a five out of five. Now, a, a product like a flagship would get a lower grade because they produce a lot of retail. So it's almost like a rarity score. So that got a five. 
The OG score is how far back in history the product goes. The top's finest flashback is a first, but it's a flashback to an, a more original early 90s release. So it's got quite a bit of history to it. I, got a, I gave it a four. Now the poll, this is, I took a poll of the, everybody's top releases of the year, what they thought the top releases of the year. And the poll grade for this, I, it got a one. Let's go look at the poll results here. And the poll results show all the way at the bottom, Flashback only got two votes. So that's towards the bottom of the list here. So it got a score of a one. Overall score of 44. So out of the top 17, this was the lowest grade of them all. Now I'm not gonna go through every single one of these again, but I'm just gonna scroll through and we're gonna kind of do an overview. Panini Select was next on the list. You can go through and you can look at the different grades I gave it. Maybe you disagree, maybe you agree. Something to note is it got a zero on the licensing grade. So you need to keep mind of that. And we can go over, now the box price was good. It got a good box price. The ceiling score is very low. On a lot of the Panini products, the ceiling score is gonna be low. Let's scroll over here and look at some other interesting things. The dollar per hit and the dollar per auto grades were very high. So it got a five and a five. The poll, it was also one of the lowest polled releases. So it got one extra point. So that was number 16 on the list. Number 15 were at Panini Chronicles. This was one of the greatest, one of the best releases of the year last year, in my opinion. But this year it, it fell down the rankings a little bit because of the increase in price mostly. But you'll see the stock, I gave it a four because there's a mixture between cards that have a very thin stock and cards that have a thicker stock. So it didn't capitalize with a five. I appeal, it got a four, you could argue a 4.5 because of some of the better, like the Spectra, um, maybe the Phoenix. There are, there are some really nice looking cards in here, but not all of them are that nice. Collectability, it gets a three. We can go across now. Also, you see that the box price is quite low on here. One of the lowest prices now. It was $200 a box, but it dropped a little bit, so that made it a little more appealing lately. The ceiling, it's a two. It doesn't have a very high ceiling for some for these cards. Let's go all the way over to the end, and you can see again that the dollar per hit score is very good, and the dollar per auto score is very good. It got a five on both of those. So this made it up to a 47. Select was a 45, so it gained a couple points. Then we get into some actual flagship stuff here. I wouldn't actually call it flagship. It is Bowman Chrome, so it's not really technically flagship, but it is a Topps product. It got the one on the licensing. I appeal, five. Collectability, five. So these are some of the higher scores. The highest scores you can get is a five. And a 4.5 on the card stock too. It's, it's nice, it's really nice. Thick, quality card. Checklist, it got a five. Some of the things that it lacked. So the box price, it's very expensive and the ceiling per box price grade is is a three. It's pretty low just because it's so expensive. Let's go over a little bit and see some of the other reasons why it didn't score that high. You can see that it got a two on the dollar per auto because the autos are not very affordable, $470 per hit. So that was why it was the down that low. And then you can see that the final score over here was a 48.5. Let's go to the next one. We've got Optic. Optic comes in on the list at number 13. So last year, Optic, I believe it was 11. And this year, it's down to 13. And a lot of that is because the price went up once again. Last year, you could get a box for fairly cheap. It was like 80 bucks, I think. And you get the two guaranteed autos. This year, we're at about 130. Very good checklist, though. No licensing. Collectability, a three. If this, if we, if we were talking about football or basketball, it would be a little higher. But, and the ceiling is a two. You'll see right here. The ceiling is a two. So these are some of the the downfalls of optic this year. And had a nice dollar per auto grade, five out of five, and a dollar per hit grade, five out of five. So that's what kept it afloat. And as far as the polling goes, it's down towards the bottom with a two. OG. I, it got a four because of the Don Ross name. Don Ross goes back a long way, so 
Being Don Ross, I gave it a four. And we're at 49.5 for the final S score. The S stands for striker, of course. Let's go to the next one. Tops Chrome Sapphire. I don't know how these numbers got flipped around here, but that should be 12 and that should be 11. Oh, I know why, because I added I added something in and then I forgot to change the numbers. But anyway, let's go, let's go on. Tops Chrome Sapphire. Nice solid card stock. Eye appeal, gorgeous. Collectability off the charts. Licensing, yes. Checklist, very good. Here's the problem. Super expensive. It's got a really high ceiling. And the ceiling per box is 88, so that bumped that up to a four. You'll see the difference between Topps Chrome Sapphire and Bowman Chrome Sapphire. That one point right there because of the $94 versus $88. It got a little bump. Let's go over and check out some of the other details. So the dollar per auto, very low grade. You're not, you know, it's it's just really expensive for to pull an auto out of here. The production, it got a five because they didn't produce a ton of it. It's limited production. The polling, it got a three. It's not everybody's favorite, but people did like it. And the final score, 50.5. Let's move on to the next. We've got top series one. Now this is one of the best products of the year. I think this is coming in at number 11. As far as flagship goes, series one is better than series two and update. So it's the best flagship product of the year. The stock got a three. It's got thin flimsy cheap cardstock but you know what you're getting eye appeal eh, 3.5 it's not the fanciest thing collectability i give it a 4.5 it's not quite a five people it is very collectible and very desirable but it's not at the highest of the high end you got a bonus point for the licensing the checklist i gave it a 4.5 it's almost at a five but it just doesn't have Luis robert in there so the box price you'll see is quite affordable $150 per box. Ceiling isn't there though. That's a three. The ceiling per box score, however, is quite nice. So that gets a four. The dollar per auto grade is very low because you don't get a guaranteed auto in a box, but you do get a guaranteed hit. So you'll see this is the first place where there's a quite a discrepancy between dollar per auto and dollar per hit. The dollar per card is very low as well. So the dollar per card grade is good at a five. Bias grade, that's my personal favorite. It's not my favorite favorite, but I do like it a lot. So it got a five on my bias grade. Production, way low though, as far as the grade goes. It got a two on my production grade scale because they produced a lot of this product. And polling, people love it. So it got a five on the poll. 50.5 as a final grade. Let's keep going down. The Bowman Mega Box. Cardstock got a four. Some of the stock is really nice. Some of it's quite thin. Eye Appeal, it got a four. It has those really nice Mojo refractors, but then there's just some base stuff too. Collectability, five. It is one of the most collectible products. Licensing, a one. There are $55 per box, and it has a an extremely high ceiling. So it got a five on the ceiling. The ceiling per box is 11, so it's a it's the best you can get as far as the ceiling per box grade. You'll see that that got a five. The dollar per auto, not good though. We got a two on that. Dollar per hit, once again, not very good. Got a two on that. However, the dollar per card, not so bad. The bias grade, I really like it, so I gave it a five. Polling, you guys don't seem to like it as much though. It got a one on the polling scale. So that's what kept this product down low or else it would have been in the top five probably. Overall score, 51. Let's go down. Tops Gypsy Queen. Now we're getting there. Um, we are, we're getting, we're in the top 10 list. Let's see. We got 17, 16. Bowman was 10. Gypsy is nine overall. So it's a 3.5 on the stock. The stock is thicker than your average uh, flagship stock, but not so thick that it, it got a, a big bump. You could argue that this deserves a four, and I would listen to your argument. Eye appeal, it gets a four. It's not the fanciest product. It's meant to be kind of an old timey look. Collectability, a four. It's not the most collectible, but it's not the least. You get the bonus for the license, the bonus for the, the checklist because it has Robert in there. $235, this is a problem. 
it's too expensive, in my opinion. I think that Gypsy Queen should be cheaper. If it was like 175 bucks, this would be one of the best products of the year. But the ceiling score is a three. So it's for the cost of the box, the ceiling isn't quite there. And that's what kept it lower on the on the totem pole here. So let's go over here. The auto, the dollar per auto grade is quite nice though. Even at that inflated price, they're all on card autos. So that's a four, not quite the top. And also dollar per hit is quite nice too. That's a four. We can go over and see where it loses some steam. The production, because they made quite a bit of this stuff with all the retail that you could get. And the OG, it's not the it's not the oldest, most original. You know, it doesn't go back that long. Gypsy Queen doesn't, but it's it's kind of a throwback to an older design. But it got a three. Polling got a three, so somewhere in the middle, and that's a 51.5. Along with the next product, which is Tops Chrome Ben Baller. Everybody loves this product. But there are some issues, and we can go over it. Cardstock, 4.5. It's They're thick cards, high quality. I appeal, 5. It's, it is beautiful. Collectability, 5. People love this. It's a high-end product. Licensing, yes. Checklist, yes. It's got... I mean, the checklist is probably the best checklist, um, or one of the best checklists out of all of it, because it's got all the good rookies, and it's a low lower number checklist. Here's where we get into some issues. It's extremely expensive, 430 per box, roughly. You know, it was closer to like six, 700 when it first came out, but it's dropped. The ceiling, five. It's got a really high ceiling. Ceiling per box grade is very good too. Here's where we get into the issues. The dollar per auto got a bad grade. It costs a lot of money to get an auto out of here, so that got a one. You're not really buying this product for the auto though. You're buying it for the parallel. And also the dollar per hit grade, one. So that's what bumped this product down. We've got some other issues here. The dollar per card grade, it's $4.50 about for a card. So that's a low grade for that. But the bias, I love it. Gave it a five. Production, very low. Gave that a five. OG, nope. So three is the bottom for the OG score, really. I don't. I didn't go any lower than that just because I didn't want to mess up the formula too much. But the polling, people love the baller. So it got a nice grade for the polling. And 51.5 as the final score here. Let's drop down and we can see the, the final final products here. We're down to Topps Museum coming in at seven overall. Now this is a sleeper pick, okay? This is a little bit of a sleeper. Five on the cardstock, very thick cardstock. I appeal, it's a pretty beautiful product. Not the best, not shiny and glossy, but you get a 4.5 on that scale. And it's got the licensing, it's got the checklist, and it's it's $295, which seems like a lot, but it's got a pretty nice ceiling because there's a lot of exclusive, uh, there's, there's some very nice one of ones, there's Hall of Famers in there, big chunks of bats that you can get. So the ceiling per box score is pretty good, it got a four. The dollar per auto grade is pretty nice, $148, and that gets a four, but we we gain bonus points here because the dollar per hit grade is really nice at $74. So we got a little bit of extra love there, a five out of five. Going over to the dollar per card, it's 15 bucks. That's really low, that's a two. The lowest I went was a two on the dollar per card grade. The bias, they got a four. I like the product, it's not my favorite though. The production, very low got a five on the production OG it got a three it's not it doesn't have that long of a history and the polling it got a two so that's a 52.5 overall going down next tops finest everybody loves tops finest cardstock nice and thick got a four eye appeal it's it's pretty it's pretty it's a pretty card <laughs> collectability three and a half it's not the most collectible it's not the least it still has some collectability but it's not the highest. Checklist, great checklist. So it's about $200 a box, and the ceiling is pretty high, so I got a four on the ceiling score there. Um, let's see some of the things that it did well at. It did well as far as the dollar per hit, it's 100 bucks. So the dollar per auto and the dollar per hit score are, are both fours. So it did well there. 
The dollar per card grade, it's 333, so it's pretty expensive in a dollar per card basis. Um, then we've got fours across the board here, the bias, the production, and really it probably could be a five. So it could go up a little more if I gave that a five on the production, because it is a limited production release. OG, now it does go back quite a ways, but not all the way to, you know, basically the 80s or before, but it is, it was invented in the 90s, early 90s. So I could give that a five too. Polling, everybody likes Top's Finest. So that got a four on the polling score. Next up, coming in at number five, now we're at the top five guys. We've got Triple Threads. Card stock, very thick, five out of five. Eye appeal, it's a, it's a nice looking product, but not the best, four. Collectability, got a four. Um, checklist is really good. Now it's pretty expensive, but it has a high ceiling. So it got a 4.5 on the ceiling score, and it got a four on the ceiling per box. The dollar per auto grade is a three. So it's not the best, but it makes up for it with the dollar per hit score which is a five, because you get four hits in that box. We can go, we see that the dollar per card is really high, so that got dropped down to a two. Uh, but everything else is pretty nice, uh, other than the OG score, but the bias score is a five. The production's a five, because they didn't make a ton of it, and there's some low-numbered parallels you can get out of here. Uh, like, every box has pretty, pretty low-numbered stuff. And the polling, people really like triple threads. So made the top, top, top five list, it's at a five. We can go down to number four, Top Stadium Club. I didn't know that this was going to score this well, but it sure did. The stock is really thin and flimsy, which you can go to Top Stadium Club Chrome for that. But Stadium Club Chrome didn't make the list because it's too it's too new. I don't know how collectible it is. But the eye appeal, 4.5. Beautiful photography. You guys could claim that it's a 5, but I gave it a 4.5 because it's not shiny, not fancy. It's still... A regular looking card collectability it's a four um, it's quite collectible checklist it's got everybody we want here's a here's where it starts getting interesting 120 bucks for a box of this you guys it doesn't have the ceiling it's a 3.5 on the ceiling score but the ceiling per box grade gets a five because the ceiling that it does have is kind of negated by the fact that it's so affordable to buy and the ceiling per box grade is really nice Let's keep going. The dollar per auto, it's the best. It's a five out of five. And, and then that makes the dollar per hit grade a five as well. You've got the dollar per card as one of the lowest. So that gets a five. The bias score, I gave it a four. It's one of my favorite products, but I didn't want to go too crazy and say it's my favorite. But it got a four, which is a nice grade. Production, now they, it, they did have a lot of retail for this. So it got a three. The OG, this stuff goes back quite a ways. I remember it from when I was a kid collecting. So I think back in the early 90s, 92, I want to say. I don't know for sure, though. So the OG, it got a four. And the polling, it's not everybody's favorite, but people did like it. And it got some some score. So it got a 55 as the final grade. Number four, Topps Chrome. Topps Chrome, baby. It could get number one, but there are some things it's got going against it. The stock, very nice. It got a four. I appeal, four. So it's not the best for either of those, but it is really good. Collectability, five out of five, of course. Checklist, five out of five. Ceiling, I gave it a four. Now, you could argue that it should deserve maybe a 4.5, and I, I would consider that. But I gave it a four. Ceiling per box score, once again, we're, we're at a four. So that's really good. It's not the best, but it is really good. You, you could potentially give both of these a five. We're, we're, we're talking about really fine details with the top three. The dollar per auto grade is a four. It's, it's, it's very nice. You get two autos per box. Same with the dollar per hit, it translates. The dollar per card grade, $2.08. It's not great, but it's not the worst. Bias, I love it. Gave it a five. Production, they made quite a bit of it, so it got a three. You could argue that this should maybe deserve a 3.5, uh, but it still had a lot of retail. OG, it goes back quite a ways. I gave it a five. You could argue maybe a f uh, maybe a 4.5, but I gave it a five. And the polling, this was one of the favorites for people, so that got a five. So we're at 56, number three, Topps Chrome. 
Number two, Bowman. It got a 3.5 on the stock because some of it's really thin, but some of it's chrome, so it's kind of hit or miss there. Eye appeal, 3.5. I mean, it's just Bowman. There's nothing super special about it. So the eye appeal is just pretty standard. Collectability, though, 5 out of 5 for sure. You get bonus point, checklist. I gave it a 5 because Bowman this year, you can get Jason Dominguez out of there, and that is a huge card. And we don't really know, but there are some collectible players. So that got a 5. 230 bucks. These are all hobby prices, too, by the way, guys. 230 bucks. The ceiling score, five. Bowman has the highest ceiling. The ceiling per box grade got a five. The auto per box grade is a three, though, because you only get one auto per box. So that's a really expensive autograph. But the ceiling's so high that it kind of has to be. The dollar per hit grade, same thing. Now, it's, it's very affordable, 96 cents per card. So it got a five out of five on the dollar per card. The bias, I love it. It's my favorite. Five out of five. Production, they did make a lot of it though, because there's two different formats of hobby and then there's all the different retail formats. Also, if you consider that Bowman Mega Boxes have the same product in there, OG, Bowman goes way back. So that gets a five. Pull, everybody loves it. One of the favorites. So that got a five out of five. That gets us to 57. And the last but not least, guys, we got Bowman Draft. It's cut off a little on the bottom here, but Bowman Draft. I, apparently, it's the best release of the year. You could have fooled. I, I thought it was maybe in the top 10, but let's look at the numbers and let's break them down. 3.5 stock. Some of it's good. Some of it's not so good. So it gets a 3.5. It does have a lot of chrome cards and refractors and some really thickies. I appeal, once again, 3.5. It's standard. Collectability, though, 5 out of 5. Licensing, yep. Checklist, I gave it a 4.5. I could have given it a 5. I could have given it a 4. So I just went with 4.5 because we don't really know. But I do know that Torkelson, you know, it's a good ratio of position players to pitchers. Ceiling, 5 out of 5. These Bowman products have the highest ceiling. But it got a ceiling per box grade of a 4. And that's because it's about 350 bucks for a jumbo box of this. The dollar per auto, it got a 4 because you get 3 autos. So it kind of made up for that lower ceiling per box grade because of the three autos per jumbo box. The dollar per hit, it's a four. The dollar per card, it's only 91 cents. So it's got one of the best dollar per card grades. Bias, I love the stuff. I gave it a five. Production, I gave it a four because there's no retail that you can get of this, but it's not a super exclusive product. They do make quite a bit of it. You can go back and look at my production video last year for Bowman's Draft, Bowman Draft, and see that they pump out a lot of it. But the fact that they didn't have retail took it from a three to a 3.5 to a four. The OG, once again, Bowman product goes way back. And the polling, people liked it, but it wasn't their top favorite favorite. 57.5. So there you have it, guys. I wanna hear your comments below. What do you think of the top 10 list? I want to know what you would have changed or if you think that I'm off somewhere, I'm interested in your opinion. And, you know, let's just go over the top 10 one more time. We got number one, Bowman Draft, number two, Bowman, number three, Tops Chrome, number four, Stadium Club, number five, Triple Threads, number six, Finest, number seven, Museum, number eight, Ben Baller, number nine, Gypsy Queen, number 10, Bowman, Mega Box, and then coming right behind is series one, and you got some Topps Chrome Sapphire. Now the highlighted blue means that I included these into the best of the year breaks. I'm gonna be doing a best of the year break and I'm gonna break it up into two breaks. So these products are gonna be mixed in between break number one and number two. The two things that are going to be both in both breaks are Bowman and Topps Chrome. Thanks for watching, I will catch you all later.